later on. We'll now move on to the final uh, formal paper for this morning's um, seminar. Um, and um, I'm particularly grateful to Jesus Fernandez Fernandez, who was able to step in at really very late uh, moment um, uh, when another speaker had to pull out. Um, and uh, I'm particularly pleased because uh, speaking about Spain, Spain is a big state um, with a lot of archaeology and a lot of work that's been done. Um, so it is great that it's still able to be represented um, in this morning's seminar. Um, so um, I am very pleased that we are able to um, have that area represented. Um, um, also pleased that uh, Jesus was able to speak because he and I have worked together on recent publication, which he edited, which included a paper of mine. Um, Jesus is a research fellow at the University of Oviedo. Um, he's director of several archaeological projects, including an archaeological museological community project in the Asturias in Spain. He has an honorary position as well at the Institute of Archaeology in London. Um, his work is centred on the archaeology of cultural landscapes and heritage studies, and he recently co-edited a volume on the archaeology of medieval villages currently inhabited in Europe. So again, another excellent speaker um, for this seminar. Um, so thank you very much again, Jesus, for being able to uh, step in at the last minute. Um, and uh, the stage is yours. Thank you very much, Francis. Can you can you see the, the slide? Morgan? Yes, yep, we can see that. Thank you very much. So uh, as I said, thank you very much, Karen, and thanks to the to the medieval settlement research research group for your kind invitation to participate in this seminar. And it's good to to see you and um, some speakers like it is, whom I have not had the, the chance to see in some time, and I'm glad to, to participate. Uh, I'm going to talk about the relationship, uh, relationship between infrastructure archaeology uh, in Spain and medieval settlements, uh, although from a partial point of view, as uh, I indicated in the, in the title. Uh, but let me explain briefly why this approach will be limited. Firstly, because I, I'm not a commercial or rescue archaeologist, nor do I work in that type of, of archaeology. Um, I've worked it just a bit um, a long time ago, and therefore my view is more academic from outside of necessarily incomplete. The archaeological projects I'm involved, as Karen said, are in, in, in located in rural areas on a small scale and very close to the communities. So I consider myself a community archaeologist, and this is why my view of this type of archaeology is quite distant and also quite critical. Uh, secondly, the impact of this type of archaeology, and let me, I'm going to, yeah. As I said, the impact of this uh, type of archaeology has been current, is current in some territories such as uh, Navon, La Rioja, Cantabria, or Asturias itself, where I live and work, where archaeology continues to be more dependent on university research projects, and the archaeology of infrastructures uh, has been especially intense in the surroundings of large cities such as Barcelona, or especially Madrid. My examples will come primarily from these places, and uh, there is another gap. Finally, my approach is partial because I focus above all, above all on the early Middle Ages uh, of the north of Spain, uh, as this is my main research area. I hope, despite, despite these conditions, conditioning factors, to adequately illustrate the situation in Spain and formulate in a balanced way what the main contribution of this type of archaeology has been and what their limitations are in the Spanish archaeological context. So let's turn now to the to the next slide. It, sorry. Yeah, let's turn in the uh, so we are going to talk about uh, um, that topic. I think it's important to understand uh, 
the, the impact of, of uh, infrastructure quality in medieval archaeology in Spain. Uh, because uh, this double birth of academic and commercial archaeology at the same time in Spain. Uh, why is this important? Because it explains why commercial archaeology has had a greater impact on medieval archaeology than other archaeologists, like prehistoric archaeology or classic archaeology, which were well established in university departments before the emergence of commercial archaeology in the, in the natives of the 20th century. Unlike other European territories, where there are long traditions of medieval archaeology, in Spain it's relatively, relatively recent. It began to lay its foundation in the first Congress of the Spanish Medieval Archaeology, held in West in 1985. It is not the origin of medieval archaeology, of course. Uh, there were medieval archaeologists before this day, but there was, there was not medieval archaeology as a specific area of knowledge, as an academic discipline epistemologically differentiated from history. Almost at the same time, in 1985, the law of Spanish historic heritage and the adoption of global policies, guidelines on heritage safeguarding were approved. And this gets rise to the birth of the liberal profession of archaeology in Spain. How do the United commercial and academic medieval archaeology evolve separately and in some different way? Uh, on the one hand, the Department of Archaeology and the first area of medieval archaeology were established in some Spanish university, universities uh, with historiographic approaches that were being renewed as a very traditional in some of its aspects with small-scale projects and low budget in the United States. Uh, I'm talking about the United so the, the trenches and On the other hand, and at the same time, there was an exceptional building boom between building battles between 1970, 19, uh, 1997 and 2008 that makes Spain unique in the European context. This boom generated a huge demand for commercial activity, sector that was, was almost non-existent before the 90s. The public demand grew at the same time as the private one and contributed to the growth of the battle and the promotion of infrastructure works. Thus, large companies and archaeology teams were formed that undertook the excavation of large areas, making large fires inconceivable in university departments. So during this time, commercial archaeology can be said to overshadow medieval academic archaeology. However, after 2008, this type of archaeology practically disappeared mm -hmm. after the crisis and the bursting of the real state bubble. There is practically nothing left of it now, only uh, results that are often scattered and published or partially published, waiting to be systematized. In this uh, graph, in the next slide, thank you. In this graph that I titled Archaeology and the Rhythm of Capitalism and its Crisis, these three stages I, I talked about um, are summarized, uh, ironically, using some familiar terms for medievalists, like one period or dark ages. Uh, but yeah, we have these three, three stages, the formative period of rescue archaeology in the 80s, the warm period of rescue archaeology, the golden era, uh, between the mid 90s and, 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 and 2008, and the dark ages, and now. Yeah. Um, I'm going to focus on the same branch of the mid 90s to 2010, more or less, 2010, more or less, when this great impact of the archaeology of uh, large infrastructures took place and assess some of its results for medieval archaeology. And then I will reflect also what is happening now. But in conclusion, this idea, uh, this first slide, uh, summarizes the important impact that commercial archaeology has had on the development of young 
young Spanish medieval archaeology as a whole. At the time, the methodological approaches of medieval archaeology were being renewed. Researchers were becoming increasingly interested in the transformation of settlements and material culture, extensive excavation by archaeological studies, and the study of certain material culture that was previously neglected, like common pottery, for example. But these ambitious projects were difficult to carry out in the university due to their uh, high budget, and it was necessary to put these approaches into, into practice. Uh, and in this context, in the 90s, the archaeology of infrastructures opens up a huge window of opportunity, and some archaeologists from private companies begin to work with these approaches and discover fields of silos, both old fields and as had to which archaeological attention was not previously paid, and which results to be the context of, of early medieval village and early medieval settlement. I, I'm going to show you some examples now. It is the moment in which the great extension and excavation are carried out in medieval rural settlements, such as the one that, that I, I will show you. The impact of this archaeology has been so important that some scholars speak the talk of an authentic archaeological term in the Spanish uh, medieval archaeology at that, that time, uh, at the night, uh, according with Julio Scalona uh, words. So let me show you some examples of this excavation. Uh, firstly, I'm going to focus on the uh, surroundings of the city of Madrid. Uh, I think that the, the most uh, impressive Examples correspond to the excavation in the sites near this city, uh, uh, those of Kafka or El Pelicano stand out as an example. And these are, sorry, uh, this is a, here is a map showing some of the, of the uh, sites excavated in the south of Madrid or, or in the surroundings of the city of Madrid. Uh, these are sites excavated in, in large areas, far from the small-scale excavations that, that were uh, carried out in Spain before this decade. Increasingly, free it from the historiographic approaches, and this is why they address some problems, such as the Gothic archaeology in the 5th to the 8th centuries, with a completely different methodological approach. Extensive excavation, as I pointed out, the monumentalization of the, of the archaeology programs, projects by archaeological control, etc., leading to the scribe for the first time the spatial, the spatial relationships of rural settlement in this period, as well as their internal structure, are uh, then completely unknown topics until then. Uh, this is uh, the example of Gothic near uh, Madrid, where a complete early uh, medieval rural settlement was documented, including its necropolis, as you can see uh, in the picture, and agrarian area. Uh, and the settlement, uh, you can see the, the special, special relationship between the settlement and the necropolis. And it is most, it's important to quote because before this period, in the, the early medieval actually was mainly focused in, in necropolis itself, and we didn't know anything. Uh, about elements of so this, this is why this archaeology was very important. Um, yeah, and then talk a bit about the agrarian archaeology. Yeah. Uh, Precisely, one of the great contributions of this type of archaeology has been to incorporate the study of crops and agricultural areas. In the case of workers, it is observed that the domestic units would comprise an extension of their own line in, in, in which all activities would be carried out, as well as the construction and reconstruction of domestic structures. It has been possible to appreciate how the dimensions of these plots are reduced over the centuries, but since the early Middle Ages, rural housing our mother would always have, have its own space with these characteristics. 
uh, this type of record and the child of studying would not have been possible without this type of extensive excavation. And I consider it to be one of its most important contributions. Without understanding the productive areas, we will never understand the logic or functioning of medieval settlements. Let me show you uh, more examples like the um, Palicano and other settlements uh, contain characteristics. Uh, uh, then got it in some aspects. So we have here um, timber buildings or silos that combine with uh, uh, other kind of, of architecture. Yeah. And here you go another example um, like the early medieval farms excavated. Uh, so they are different. Um, kind of settlements, uh, more dispersed, so, and uh, from different periods, in the same areas, but uh, from different periods, and they are not properly built. Uh, we, we can consider them like uh, farms of different categories. Yeah. Um, and now, now I, I will just write you some examples from Galicia. I think that uh, talking about uh, Archaeology, uh, uh, sorry, talking about agrarian archaeology, it's interesting to highlight these works that were developed in, in Galicia around the Ciudad de la Cultura infrastructure. Uh, these interventions were carried out in cultivation terraces and provided very old technology for some of them from the 6th century. Uh, which indicated a very old process of formation of this agrarian landscape, much earlier than what medieval historiography suggested. In practice, it meant a very interesting renewal of the approaches to agrarian archaeology that until then had been handled in the Spanish context. Uh, in Catalonia, Catalonia, there was a, a situation similar to to Madrid. And between the mid 90s and 2008, the number of archaeological activities around different types of infrastructure uh, carried out by private companies intensified. In total, in this period, about 50 settlements were excavated and dated between the 5th and 11th centuries, some extensive and almost fully documented, while others were not. Uh, one of the problems with this type of infrastructure archaeology uh, is its territorial DNA. In the Catalan case, it is even more pronounced than in Madrid. The areas with an archaeological record, as you can see in the picture, in the picture are mainly limited to the surroundings of Barcelona. While other areas, uh, mainly rural areas, remain empty. Uh, Something that can be said about the rest of the of Spain, uh, as I pointed out at the beginning, uh, some of these uh, sites were hastily excavated and are not well studied or published. Uh, there have also been confusing chronological attribution due to the lack of standardized criteria. This is a general problem. So. Spain lack of standardization, and this is one of the characteristics of this record: the diversity of procedures, regional, re, regional regulations, requirements, and the absence of a common research framework. Uh, despite all these limitations, uh, a record of these characteristics is available for the first time. Although it is a line of research that has not been developed. Uh, but that allows, allows us to understand uh, the first early medieval settlement in Catalonia and its changes with respect to late antiquity. So, um, to sum up uh, this archaeology, and, and here you have some examples of this uh, excavation in Catalonia. And uh, as I say, as I said, uh, this archaeology and its a new record has uh, opened the opportunity to carry out much more complex 
socioeconomic analysis of the Arab medieval settlement in the Iberian Peninsula. But on the other hand, there has been uh, dislocation between academic and non-academic archaeology. Most of these projects have been performed without research institutions and have not been driven by research questions or within research projects. In addition to this, we must also bear in mind the situation of normative dispersion of the Spanish territory, highly decentralized and with territorial particularism that vary in their demands and all controls. And probably this uh, difference that explains, explains also the different results of uh, um, control archaeology or preventive archaeology. Um, all this has made very difficult the creation of this uh, common Versailles framework, uh, I said. Uh, after this gold period of commercial archaeology in Spain, a new era of Darnex, Darnex began in 2008 with the economic crack. Uh, that means, in fact, uh, almost the end of infrastructure archaeology in Spain. I'm going to talk a bit about this post crisis scenario here in the last. 10 years, uh, the economic crisis of 2008 put an end to the expansive cycle of public and private investment in Spain. Uh, here you go, uh, some graphic information. Uh, you have uh, the example of transport infrastructures in investment in Spain, and uh, you can see how from 2008 and 9, uh, the investment, the public investment in infrastructures. Uh, going down. Uh, the crash of housing, construction, and cutbacks in the public sector to stop, it, stop this type of archaeology and has grown around this emerging sector. According to Eva Vargas, uh, more than 70% of Spanish archaeological companies closed by 2017. With this, most of the great medieval excavation projects disappeared. Investment in the public sector of large infrastructure, as I explained, has not recovered. Uh, the 19 COVID crisis is not helping to this situation and reveal the true the, the situation, reveal the true fragility of this non academically oriented model of archaeology. While it undoubtedly made important contributions, as I have already explained, its market-dependent orientation may be temporary and non-continuous. The positive fact is that some company archaeologists, upon abandoning their private activity, not private, but this kind of excavation, because they are not demand, and they join the research doing doctoral thesis that took advantage uh, of an systematized this record, uh, on the other hand, the few professionals who remain in archaeology around 30% have oriented their projects by introducing a term towards community archaeology, mass scale heritage dissemination projects that are sustainable over time. During the last decade, other during the last decade, other young researchers who did not work in private companies such as Carlos Tejerizo take advantage of the records generated during the investment boom by systematizing them to write doctoral thesis. Uh, the, the PhD of Carlos Sajerito was about this area, the Duero Basin, uh, and there are some differences of this area uh, in relation with other areas of, of of, of Spain. Here, the impact of the emergency intervention in the northern plateau of the Iberian Peninsula developed uh, differently compared to other territories, such as Madrid, Catalonia, or Galicia. Uh, although there was a very significant number of interventions, many of these were mainly linked to the construction of railways, highways, and a small industrial state. The result was the, the attainment of a very large mass of data on early medieval rural context from long distance linear excavations, but there, there were no interventions in, in large areas, for example, in the south of Madrid, 
Carlos Tejerico's thesis is an example of an attempt to systematize uh, this record in order to generate new scientific knowledge from, from it. Unfortunately, this work is the exception rather than the rule, as most archaeological excavation reports of this type remain scattered and, and published. Let me um, conclude uh, with this inconclusive conclusion. Uh, the current situation is that the archaeology of large infrastructure has practically disappeared now in Spain. Uh, archaeology professionals have abandoned their activity or have taken refuge, refuge in other sectors or academia. Uh, Spanish medieval archaeology has returned, returned to the university setting. Uh, the result of infrastructure, the results of the infrastructure archaeology has thus been variable. On the one hand, medieval archaeology has greatly benefit, benefit from excavation around the structures. These excavations have been a true experimental environment in which to test new methods, methods uh, and, um, and structures to excavate. Uh, yet it has proven to be a fragile uh, archaeology, dependent on the rhythms of capitalism and its prices, and even to adapt to low funding context. Uh, on the other hand, uh, academic archaeology, which for two decades viewed, viewed commercial archaeology with the mixture of envy and suspicion, has survived thanks to a framework of greater job security, but has not always had the capacity or interest in systematizing these records and creating a common framework for reflection work. I think that academic archaeology has been maturing and has learned a lot methodologically from the experience. And above all, it, it is an, in charge of making the relevant reflections, taking note of the consequences and learning from these lessons, which indicate that it is necessary to support an archaeology guided by, guided by knowledge, socially permitted and economically sustainable with a strategy of economic diversification, not only the dependent on the private market or another expansion or nor crisis of capitalism. That's all I have to say about infrastructure activity and the medieval settlement in the north of Spain and early medieval period. Apologies for my partial review, mainly focused in, in this area. And thank you very much for your attention.